Hello. Hi, I want to record a video so that I can share with you how I coach myself so that it's available to you. So you don't have to do any of it. Just want to say, right, if it's making you overwhelmed or stressed out or you're feeling like this is a lot to do, you don't have to do it. This is just simply me sharing with you in case you do ever want to do that. And I think it is a great self-care. So uh, I do encourage you to do, um, if it is overwhelming, like you can do this very small part of it and I will show you how to do that, right? So because I see my clients being a lot like me and I'm a lot like my clients, I find it very useful to do this for myself as a daily practice to get myself out of the fight or flight mode, out of the like urgent anxiety or out of like being depressed. Um, because, right, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, we don't do our life or we don't go through our day when we're like constantly like anxious or, or um, feeling like, you know, life's out to get us, right? So in the morning, every single morning with my coffee, I just do it while I'm having my coffee. And I do get up before the kids because I find it, it like gives me chance to be with myself, to take care of myself, to have like coffee in my peace. I, whenever I don't do it, it's okay, but I do, I just do like to do this and I do do that as much as I can. And I understand with little kids, like you literally have to set an alarm to get up before they get up. And that's what I used to do for a long time. Now that my kids are a little bit bigger and like the little ones are still four and a half, but they do get up and they play because I have so many, they play. And so I'm able to have that in peace sometimes, right? Or like now in school days, I do get up at six and they get up at seven. So I literally have a quiet house. And so while I'm having my coffee, what I do is it's kind of like the um, meditation, but it, it's just a different type of meditation. I have a notebook. I have a notebook that I write in and I just have it with my coffee. And what I do is I write down thoughts. So just like... So just like I have a session with you where you tell me things and I coach you, what you're actually doing is you're telling me your thoughts, okay? So you're, and that's why we have like little arguments sometimes. You're like, no, 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 it's true. It's a fact. It's the news. That's how the world works. And I'm like, actually, it's a sentence. It's a thought you're thinking. And we work through that, right? That's what I do with myself. I tell myself in a book, and I write down thoughts that I'm thinking. And the reason why it's important to write them down as opposed to thinking them is because when we write them down, we take them from out from inside of our brain and we put them outside and we can objectively like actually look at them and be like, oh, right, it is a sentence, right? Because when it's in, when it's in our head, our brain is very smart. It can actually convince us Oh yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm not thinking that and it's not true and it can convince us that we're not actually thinking that thought, right? It can, like, it's so fast in reacting to its own thoughts. It's like, um, right? We, we have our own mechanisms like, oh, I have so much to do. Oh, okay. And it's, then it starts spitting into, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And then it's like, again, oh, I don't have, I have so much to do. And then, okay, maybe I should do this now. And then you start doing that thing, right? So you're actually not uh, addressing the main thought is I have so much to do, which is the thought that creates overwhelm, right? Why do we want to do this? Why do we care to find that thought that creates overwhelm? Because as long as we don't do that, as long as we don't find it, then that overwhelm will keep on fueling your day. And guess what happens, right? When we have overwhelm fueling our day, the result for us, we're overwhelmed and exhausted and burnt out. We don't want overwhelm to be the fuel for our actions because that doesn't produce any result that we like in our life, right? In, in a, you know, if we want to acknowledge, okay, we have overwhelm from this thought, I have so much to do. And we're like, okay, well, if that's draining, that overwhelm is like, like spinning us. We're going from one thought to another to like all the errands we have to do. And meanwhile, we're not even actually doing anything. We're just sitting in our head spinning about all the things we want to do. Instead, we can say, okay, instead of feeling overwhelmed, I can choose to be focused. 
So, okay, I'm gonna make a plan for my day and then I'm gonna feel focused one thing at a time, one thing at a time. And that could be your sentence, one thing at a time. When your brain's like, oh, I have so much to do, look at all the list. You can be like, hey brain, one thing at a time. And that one sentence, if that works for you, be, can create focus for you. And from that focused place, you actually get that one thing done and get another one thing done and then get another one thing done. And by the end of the day, you have so much done and you have accomplished so much more than you would have if you were spinning in overwhelm and not getting things done, right? So that's why it's important for us to find those thoughts so that they don't keep hiding right? They don't keep like fighting behind all the other thoughts. So this is what I do. I sit down and I'm like, just whatever comes to my head, I write down. And it could be nothing that makes sense. It could be something on topic, like one topic. Uh, it could be, it, sometimes it is like literally to-do list. For me, when I get up, I'm like, okay, I gotta do lunches, I gotta do breakfast, I gotta stop by the store, I gotta like prepare for Leah, I gotta do this video, I have to do, 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 I have to reply to an email, right? So I, and I dump out all the to-do list onto my paper. And sometimes even as I'm going through other thoughts, if I have a to-do pop up, I write it down. Because our brain is not meant to store information, our brain is meant to problem solve and to be focused and to create, and it's to process information, to process feelings. But if we try to store everything we have to do, it just feels backed up and our brain keeps um, going over it, right? Going over the whole list. But if you put it down, you're like, okay, brain, I got it. I got it, I'll take care of it. I have it on my list, I'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Your brain's like, okay, I, can, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I can worry about other things, right? So that's what I do. I just write, write, write. Uh, and the small version of it, sometimes I totally do this, is like literally, I, I, if I have trouble doing this, I go, okay, how am I feeling? And so I write down, I write down overwhelmed, for example, right? Or, or anxious. In the morning for me, more anxiety. So I kind of feel anxious, right? So anxious, okay? So I feel anxious. And then I ask myself, why am I feeling anxious? And then I access that thought, which is actually creating my anxiety, which could be, I'm worried I won't, um, I don't have enough time or something, I'm worried I'm not doing enough, okay? So some sort of, so I go up, I go up. I'm like, what thought, what thought is creating this feeling for me, okay? So I write it down, I'm worried I'm worried I won't, I don't have enough time, for example, right? Enough time. Okay. And so then what I do is I ask myself, okay, what are the facts about, like, why am I even, why is this even coming up for me? Like, what is this pointing to, right? Like, what's the circumstance fact? What's the thing out in my life that's, that I think is causing this. And for me, it would be my business often, right? Or business or like say, if I don't, if I'm worried I don't have enough time, is like getting things done, right? So it would be like to-do list, right? To-do list. So I, and I, so this is what I do. I write it down like that and then, and then I see, okay, what am I doing when I'm feeling anxious? And, so I, then I go down, I go, okay, what's the action that I'm taking when I'm feeling anxious? And usually what I find is I'm spinning in my head, okay? Spinning in my head. And the main thing that I'm not doing is I'm not, um, I'm not doing, like I'm not doing anything that on all my to-do list. Okay, because like just in that moment, right? Because sometimes we can go, okay, I'm anxious, I have so much to do, I don't have enough time. Then some, a lot of us have actually found, okay, ooh, this anxiety is super helpful because it kicks into my doing mode, right? Like then I get so much done. This anxiety helps me. What I want to offer is very important distinction. When we are in anxiety, that doesn't create anything unless then we switch into a different thought, right? So if you recognize I'm anxiety, then you think, okay, now I'm going to get this done 
Now that thought is responsible for you getting it done because that thought will create a different feeling like determined, committed, focused, and that will get things done, not the anxiety. So I often offer to my clients, anxiety is an optional step or overwhelm is an optional step you can skip straight to, I'm gonna get this done, okay? So important, don't attribute your productivity to anxiety or overwhelm or I work well under pressure. No, that's not it. You have to, you don't have to feel terrible while you get things done. Like, or you don't have to go through that to get to the, the thought that's actually providing you with action, okay? So then I'm still worried, right? Because I'm not, I, I like the result that I'm creating for myself in my life when I'm anxious is I now am more anxious because I'm spinning in my head. So, and like looking for evidence how I don't have time. So I just create more of the same. Basically, whenever you have this thought, the thought will always end up in your result line. And that is like, I'm still anxious, right? I'm still anxious, okay? So this is as little as you can do. And I also offer it that to my clients that it's available for you to do any time of day, especially like if you feel, um, if you, the feelings will tell you, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I had like, uh, I had like this bad meeting with my boss. Oh, spinning, spinning, spinning. Oh, I could do, you could do that. Okay, you could sit down and be like, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? You find the thought that's causing it. And you sit down and you teach your brain to methodically think how you want to think. You teach your brain that the person out there did not cause my feeling that I'm feeling right now. Oh, it's this thought. It's this sentence that I'm believing that's causing this terrible vibration in my body right now. That's, and it's totally fine. It's a human emotion. It's a human part of human experience for me to be going through this, okay? Um, the other part I want to make sure that you know um, to, if you are going to be doing this, I really encourage you to send me your models, like this is called a model, right? To send them to me in the beginning for the first like 30 models that you do, just to make sure that you are using it for the properly, right? So that you are um, putting the right thought in there, you're not confusing the thought with the circumstance, and sometimes that you are not switching models. You might get confused here, right? I just want to make sure that I, it works well for you, that you are able to use this for yourself really well. Uh, and that does take practice and um, definitely send them to me or like just to double check. Even if you think you did it well, um, I still encourage you to send them to me because I can point out things to you that um, would be still very helpful for you. And say you're on the right track. So really do take advantage of that anytime, email, text, whatever. Even take a picture of what you write down and um, send it to me, okay? So this is something also you can do as a preparation for something, right? If you have a, a work meeting coming up, an interview, anything, you can sit down and say, okay, how am I feeling about this thing that's coming up? Okay. What am I thinking, right? If I'm feeling worried or nervous, what am I thinking that's creating this feeling? Oh, it is this thought. So you put down the thought, okay? So then you go down through the whole model and I can send you another video like how I do that with other models just to help you. Um, and so you can do that as a preparation. Then you're like, okay, if I'm feeling nervous right now before the interview and then this thought is causing my nervousness, then do I want to keep thinking that? Okay, maybe not. And you're like, okay, I want to feel confident for the interview. How do I do that? So that's what, then the, we go through the intentional model. Okay, so you say, okay, I want to feel confident, right? Confident. Okay, what do I need to be thinking to feel confident? And here's what's very important. It has to be something that is believable to you that you actually feel confident from. So it could be that sentence can change for you day to day, year to year. You could probably find a sentence that always works for you, but it has to be something that actually generates confidence for you. And if you cannot generate confidence for you, 
that is totally okay, then you need to find a sentence that's one step closer to confidence, okay? So if we have like, here's nervousness, right? If we have nervousness, nervous. And here's fully confident. Okay, if you cannot switch from nervous to fully confident, that's totally fine. You can find the next sentence that is closer to confidence that feels good to you. For example, um, sometimes the next sentence is, I am nervous and it's okay. And it's okay is like the most powerful thing you can ever do because you basically are accepting wherever you are. You're like, I'm nervous and it's okay. And I'm gonna do this interview. And even as I just say that, like it takes a lot of confidence to be okay with being nervous at an interview, right? So notice how that's like, changing the way you feel in your body and if you say it and you're like no i'm not okay i'm not I'm not okay you can even say then your sentence would be i'm nervous and i'm not okay with it right you know what i'm gonna do this interview completely nervous and not okay with it then your brain is like has nothing left to argue with right you're fully accepting how you're feeling you're not fighting the nervousness you're not trying to be different you are be being super confident about not being confident do you see that right so you just find that sentence so whatever that sentence is for you sometimes for me like the most the best sentence that can create confidence is i can do it right so just it's this is the sentence i can do it okay and guess what you can do this interview even when you're nervous Right? You're like, I can do this nervous, I can do this tired, I can do this on no sleep. I'm not gonna do it great, but I can do it B minus, right? So that's what you can do as a preparation for your interview. And then you make sure you can complete the model because as you think, okay, I can do it, then you feel confident. How do you show up to the interview? How do you even feel now towards the interview? Like, what do you do right now before the interview? when you feel confident, or you might actually um, prepare some points that will help you tell them that you can help them, right? You That confidence creates an action that is actually helpful for you to get the job, right? So fill out, fill out that model. And from that action, you create the result for yourself in your life, right? Okay, so fill those out. So this is just, an option for you to practice in your life whenever you want um, to as a daily cleanup. Here's, here's how I also like to tell my clients is whenever we tidy the kitchen, you tidy the kitchen almost every day, right? You kind of have to, right? Otherwise it just becomes like a pile of everything, right? So you have to tidy the kitchen. You have to load the dishwasher. You have to take the trash out, right? You have to clean the cutting board. You have to clean the counter because, you know, you need to use it in like another three hours to feed your kid again, right? The same thing we need to do with our brain. If we do not clean up our brain and manage and rearrange and tidy our thoughts, which is our brain, all it does, it's like an app that does thoughts, right? produces so many thoughts constantly. And so if you don't go into that app and you don't clean up the thoughts that are not serving you and you don't manage and put the thoughts that you want in the app, then what you will have is a super duper messy brain. And the super duper messy brain is like a toddler with a knife. That's what my boss always says. My boss, <laughs> my, co my coach, <laughs> she's not my boss, I'm my boss. So it's like a toddler running around with a knife because we have a primitive brain and a prefrontal cortex that's more uh, intentional and uh, advanced. That's advanced part of the brain that animals don't have is here. Primitive brain is here. And when we don't manage it, this is the part that manages our brain, all of it. Then what happens is this one rules the day and it is always either fight or flight. It's always uh, thinking something's wrong. It's, it's designed to keep us safe. It's designed to keep us, um, uh, not eaten, not dead. It's designed to keep us fed and, and just safe, right? And it's designed to avoid any extra effort. 
right? Avoid un discomfort going to an interview. It is designed to seek pleasure and watch Netflix and eat junk food. And is designed to um, pleasure, uh, wait, pleasure, avoid pain and uh, avoid extra effort. Avoid and avoid pain, right? So avoid pain. And avoiding pain is rejection, um, humiliation, embarrassment, all of that, all of those things that come, you're going on an interview, you're going to be rejected. So your brain is like sounding an alarm, don't do it, you're terrible, nobody wants you, other people will get it. It's like, it's, it's freaking out. It's a toddler who is with a knife and doesn't know how to use it. It's like, uh, right? So you need to manage your brain so that you can have and live an intentional, purposeful life, right? And so if you don't tidy your kitchen every day, what will happen? It will be a disaster and you won't be able to use it well and you won't be able to create any beautiful, uh, good fuel for your body, right? You will, won't be able to make food that fuels your body well. Same with your brain. If you don't tidy it, your brain will not be able to create thoughts that fuel your life, the life that you want, okay? So um, please bring me any thoughts that you have about this. Like if you want to dig, uh, to, to go take this even deeper and you would like to implement this in your life, I'm happy to provide you with all the support you need to get this going in your life like as an everyday practice or even just like uh, meeting to meeting, whatever you want. Like I use it all the time for everything because it's something that manages my brain to give me mental health, okay? It's like the, 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 like the king, the ace to it all, okay? So, uh, and if you want to be like, hey Natalia, I want to do as little as possible and I want to perfect that, I'll help you with that as well because uh, a little bit goes a long way and it can help you so much. And if you're overwhelmed and you're, this is too much for you, then it's not useful, right? Like even the best tools on the planet are not useful when we're using them against ourselves. Okay, have a great week. I love you and I will see you in another video. Bye.